Hello, Professor Mila. What are we going to talk about today? Hello, Ivan. Today we will talk about innovations for land rights mapping. Okay, land rights, or also we know this term as cadastral mapping, uh, is uh, our daily life, our daily task in the, this department that I'm uh, working. And let's start from the very beginning. Uh, why do we need it? And uh, why, is we, why are we dealing so much with this problem? Uh, so the first uh, goal of sustainable development goal set by United Nations, or more particularly Target 1.4, refers to equal rights uh, and access to economic resources, but this also can be referred to land tenure for all. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a research done and uh, which concluded that something like 70% uh, of the world uh, has not been uh, mapped in terms of cadaster. So people, people to land relationships are not clear. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much of a problem that uh, we are trying to solve for years. Um, well, that means that 70% uh, of the people in the planet live somewhere where they don't really own or they, they, there's no clear ownership? There is no clear ownership. 25 to 30% are only the one with the clear ownership. So 70% is unclear. In the developing countries here, it is a little bit better. But for example, the majority of uh, uh, people in African countries, they really don't know exactly where the boundaries of their uh, land is. Mm -hmm. So aiming to, to help to solve this problem, uh, we were thinking what can be the solutions that can uh, bring us more fast, uh, affordable, let's say, and easier ways to, to map the land. Uh, and this is a topic that we've been working a lot. In the, in the past, the traditional way is to use uh, theodolites, total station, GNSS, and to map every single corner on the property. However, for this, uh, we need um, years to, to do it in Africa, for example. So we were thinking how to speed it up, how to use some more innovative methods. Uh, and based on the theory of fit for purpose, uh, we try to incorporate indirect solutions, so to use image data for mm -hmm. this uh, problem. In the beginning, we started with satellite images because they cover big areas. Um, however, we found out that the resolution of these images is not always enough to really see the boundaries. So we need to have a clear, visible boundaries on the image so that we map them. And uh, what, what kind of boundaries are we talking about? It's like a farm or just a small house in a, in a slum? The, cada the cadastral boundary is, for example, your fence. You mm -hmm. have a fence and you have a house inside. But when you're looking for the satellite, you're, you, you're looking at both, right? So for can be a farm or can be just yes. a little... Yes, we can also oh. have uh, boundaries in the rural areas mm -hmm. where you have crops, lands, right? Mm -hmm. So it can be rural, it can be semi-urban um, and urban areas. And of course, in the urban areas is the most complicated <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, not always it's clear uh, where the boundary is. Even from the experts, only from looking at the images, it's sometimes not very easy to define it. Uh, so from the satellite images, we kind of switched to aerial images. Uh, and recently, a lot we are uh, working with UAV images, with unmanned aerial vehicles, or nowadays they're popular like drones. And uh, there was a big project, It's for Land, uh, Horizon 2020 project that was, uh, for four years, we were developing innovative solutions exactly in this direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there already something being applied or working on? Yes, yes. In the beginning, uh, in the beginning, it was very hard to start. And, uh, of course, uh, we had to first uh, find what uh, is the, are the best UAVs, for example, to buy, to purchase, to train the pilots. How, what is the best setting or the most, uh, uh, um, let's say, from a photogrammetric point of view, the setting that can give us the optimal result. And after that, we had to design a software or tool uh, 
uh, open source one that can be easy to use from our uh, users in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this took uh, quite some years. The first we um, we had a talk with the users, many, many um, discussions on a local, on a uh, governmental level, what are the needs, so that our development can respond to their needs uh, and can be easy implementable. Uh, the direct question on your answer, uh, the direct answer on your question uh, is in the countries that we were working, Rwanda, Kenya and Ethiopia, uh, they are already familiar with the tool that we have developed. Mm, I can also demonstrate oh, a little bit. Yes. Okay, so what the tool is doing. Okay, so what you see on the screen is an open source QGIS, a standard uh, software, but we developed on top of it a tool uh, that can, when you enter your image source of data, uh, it immediately can produce, if you see on the screen, um, kind of candidate boundaries. Behind this is a complicated machine learning algorithm, <laughs> but uh, what users see is like uh, with the click of a button coming some candidate boundaries. Uh, and then after that, the experts, uh, as you can see now, can go further, can zoom, uh, and can analyze whether these are the real boundaries that they would like to have in their uh, cadastro data. Uh, or no, so they can do some editing. Mm, but again, to speed up the manual process, we have developed several tools uh, that are based on polygon line and um, polyline se selection uh, and can really speed up this dig digitization process. So basically, the, it's not possible to be done fully automatic there is always a need of an um, expert mm -hmm. who has to decide whether this boundary is uh, uh, well automatically identified or no. Okay. Yeah. And for, for the person in the ground, let's say if I, I'm somebody living in Africa in, mm -hmm. in one of these places, what is the outcome for me? Um, the outcome for you is that mm -hmm. you have a much faster rec uh, recorded property rights. For example, they, they really don't know where this this boundary and in a manual way or there was also another method like participatory mapping way where they print, digitize on top of a map and then digitize on top of a screen. This is also a process that um, is very much fam famous in Africa to be used. It's still slow, you know, and we are trying uh, to help these people to get their land uh, rights done much faster, recorded much faster. That's your outcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mila. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ivan. Do you want to be a Geo Hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our Geo Heroes posts a new video.